and the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, joins me now live from Canberra. Thanks for being with us, Treasurer. Even though the unemployment number fell today, business confidence and investment is taking a battering because of Australia's continual in and out of lockdowns. How can you avoid a recession with that level of uncertainty at play? Well, there's no doubt that these lockdowns are going to have a significant impact on the September quarter and economic growth. In fact, Treasury's thinking of at least 2% contraction in that quarter. But today's unemployment rate, which fell from 49 down to 4.6%, which now sees the unemployment rate at its lowest level in 12 years, uh, does remind us of the underlying strength of the Australian economy. And there was a tale of of two states in in these numbers. In New South Wales, uh, we did see the impact of the lockdowns. The number of hours worked fell by 7% in the month. There was an additional 230,000 people uh, who uh, worked uh, on effectively zero or employed on zero hours. Whereas in Victoria, that where it was emerging out of lockdown, we actually saw hours worked increased by 9.7% and 170,000 fewer people in Victoria who were employed on zero hours. So that does show that the economy can bounce back when restrictions are eased. And I've got confidence that as it has done before, Lee, it will do it again. As we just heard in Laura Tingle's package before, there's criticism that the economic support on offer is a a Mm. patchwork quilt. Why don't you just go back to the clarity and the simplicity of JobKeeper? Well, I think right now we've got actually economic payments on both the business side and on the household side that are fit for purpose with the economy and the state economies particularly going to in in and out of uh, short and sharper lockdowns. But it just is Uh, more confusing, isn't it? Well, let me just take the the, the COVID disaster payment because more than $3.1 billion has gone out the door. That's a lot more flexible, uh, in fact, than JobKeeper because it's based on hours of work that has been lost with $750 payments per week, as opposed to giving people uh, a payment based on the turnover decline of the business that they work for. Uh, We also know that these payments are being made very quickly in as little as under an hour in many cases, whereas with JobKeeper, they were paid two weeks in arrear and through your employer. And we also know that the cohort, Lee, of people receiving this COVID disaster payment is broader than JobKeeper with casual not just uh, permanent or long-term casuals receiving the payment, but all casuals. When Australia hits the 70% vaccination rate, will the federal government continue to enable state governments uh, to have lockdowns by paying these kinds of income support payments? Well, firstly, the 70% target rate is based on the medical advice of the Doherty Institute. And these are the best researchers yeah, in the field. But are you going to keep paying income rate. support payments? But the, the key point, though, Lee, is that at 70%, they say that stringent lockdowns will become unlikely, that the transmissibility of the virus reduces, and that the chances of getting a serious illness or the number of people who get it reduces. So there should be no expectations on the part of the states. But if they to, do to think, call lockdowns, because well, they're on the record, Mark McGowan in yeah, WA is saying that he are. might do that. So will you keep paying income support payments? Well, there should be no expectations that the Commonwealth will continue to provide emergency economic assistance to the quantum, to the size uh, and the scale that we're doing right now. Billions of dollars are going out the door each and every week, um, but the country needs hope. The country has a plan. The, tre- the, uh, the premiers and the chief ministers agreed with the prime minister on that plan. And with the high number of vaccinations that we're now seeing, 309,000 in the last 24 hours alone, we now have that 70% target in sight. And that is what we should be shooting for. But how can you execute any kind of plan when Australia is basically being run by state premiers running their individual races? Well, they are in charge of those public health orders, uh, and that is why the Prime Minister uh, worked very um, hard to get them all to agree to this national plan. And this national plan has a two key approach. You need a 70% in that particular state, but you also need a national 70% vaccination rate. And given the momentum building in our vaccination program, that target is now in sight. And when we get to that target, uh, stringent lockdowns will be unlikely, according to the Doherty Institute. Okay, so let's talk about when we get to that target. If you look Mm. at Israel, a country with a population of about Mm. 9 million people, so about a third 
third as many as Australia, they're mm. at 80% vaccination and their seven-day mm. average of COVID cases is more than 6,000 and their seven-day average of deaths is 19. So 80% vaccination delivers nothing like zero COVID. Is any Australian political leader going to square with the public and say, listen, living our lives free of lockdown at 80% means we will have to get used to hearing of thousands of COVID cases in Australia every day? It's a fallacy to talk about the elimination of COVID. Based on the medical advice today and what we know about uh, the efficacy of the vaccines, but also uh, the transmissibility of the virus, we are going to be living with COVID for a number of years to come. With thousands That's of cases I'm, circulating in Australia? With, with, with cases and, of course, uh, with deaths and serious illness. And the idea is to get as many people vaccinated as possible to reduce and to mitigate that threat. And that's why it's so pleasing to see the vaccine hesitancy reducing uh, across the country as more people get both the Pfizer uh, vaccine and mRNA vaccine, but also the AstraZeneca vaccine. We need to learn to live with COVID and we will do so once we start to hit those 70 and 80% targets. The restrictions will ease, the economy will open back up and people can have hope about the, their future. Josh Friedman. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.